Hello, I'm Martina from Saving Matters. We get a lot of questions every day about how to transfer clients in and out of Saving Matters chairs. So I've come down to Elite Healthcare and I'm speaking here to Mary Hickey who is an expert in that field. So Mary is going to give us some tips on how to transfer successfully into the Saving Matters chairs. Martina, thank you very much for coming down to Elite Healthcare. You're very welcome. Um, I'm just going to give you some very practical tips on uh, transferring patients in and out of the seating matters chairs. Um, I have worked in this area quite a long time. Um, my background is nursing and I've also been a moving and handling instructor and I find that whole experience is very very useful for me now that I'm doing seating assessments and um, mm -hmm. Today I'm going to use the term hoist, whereas in some countries they might use patient lift or indeed I will refer to passive hoisting as well, which is your full patient hoist as opposed to your sit to stand or active lifter. City Matters make a range of chairs. Today in this video we are going to show you how to transfer in and out of the Sorrento chair, but these techniques can be applied across the full range of chairs. I'm going to show you how to uh, lift somebody from a seating Matters chair. Um, with a full passive hoist. Uh, this hoist is an ergonet solar hoist, so it has good height clearance and also a good leg span. Um, but all hoists really will work with the seating mattress chairs because they're very hoist friendly. I'm going to use, this is Deirdre by the way, and I'm going to, um, to uh, lift her. The size of sling is very important, okay? Um, if the sling is too big for the patient there's, or the client, there's too much room within it for the client to move and end up twisted and ended up in, in a bad position. So it is important to have the correct sizing. With a standard padded sling, uh, with head support, the um, best way of judging is actually the height of the patient or client first, not as opposed to their actual weight. So the bottom trim must start at the end of the spine or the end of the coccyx and the top would finish at the top of the head. And that is your very first uh, rule of thumb when you're sizing a sling. A good way to start as well, if your chair, like here, is slightly reclined and is in a slight uh, tilt in space, so rather than me having to pull the patient fully forward, the chair is going to assist me in lifting uh, Deirdre. So I'm just going to take some of the back angle recline off and I'm also going to take uh, the tilt in space off. With the armrests, uh, my client can assist me in pulling herself forward. If it's a patient or a client that's not able to do that, well then you may need help to put on the sling. So there's an inside and an outside, so the labels and um, any of the handles are actually going to go on the outside. So I usually just place the sling down behind the patient, and as I said when I was measuring, the bottom trim, it just slides down the patient's back. You don't need to see where you're going. And where the patient's bottom meets the cushion, that's where you're leaving uh, the sling. It's very easy to judge that angle with the seating mattress chairs because there's clear demarcation between uh, the back of the chair and the actual seat. You then need to come around to the front of the chair, leave your hoist out of the way, okay? I find uh, a lot of people will actually flip up um, foot plates too early, whereas leave your foot plate in place because I won't have to lift Deirdre's leg, whereas if I get rid of the, the foot plate early, I then have to lift the full leg up. So you just bring your leg pieces around to the side, okay? It's actually better if there aren't too many people putting on a sling, because if there are too many hands on deck, um, everybody's just pulling from each other. So you just catch the leg piece, give it a pull forward like that. That pull forward is very important. Again, the other side, just pull forward. You will notice that the slings that I'm using have sliding sheet material on the legs, and this makes application of the sling a lot easier. Without having to do a major lift um, with Deirdre's legs, it, the leg piece is just literally going to slide under. Okay? It is very important that the sling is on symmetrically, because if it's not, the patient is going to end up uh, being twisted. I'm just going to put the leg piece through the uh, modesty strap there. If I don't, you end up with maybe too much abduction, um, in the hips, um, which is not a good idea. Um, the, this particular sling is a looped system. I do find loop systems a lot better, particularly for uh, the complex patient. So your patient with tight hamstrings, contracted legs, uh, clients that are windswept, um, maybe bilateral amputees, and of course the wriggling children. Um, you have a lot more diversity and a lot more range of slings available for those complex type of patients. So when you have the sling on, that's the hardest bit of the work really, 
and in you come with your hoist. Now I like to come in at an angle. We seem to be kind of, everybody seems to be pre-programmed to come in uh, from the front. For picking up it's not too bad, but for landing you definitely need to come in from a side angle. Clients can be quite frightened, but particularly maybe if it's an old lady with leg ulcers on her shins or something, she's going to be terrified of the uh, mast of the hoist in front of her. So why not just throw that off to the side? Also it gives you much better clearance um, to do what you, what you need to do. So here I have my handset. I'm just going to bring the spreader bar down. This is a two point spreader bar. Now you will see that the sling has various loops. I want to have my client sitting up. There's no point in me taking uh, Deirdre from this chair and I want to sit her on a different chair um, if she's in a reclined position. I want her sitting up. To achieve that, I need to go short loops on the shoulder. Okay. So that's the first loop. And I need to go long on the leg. Okay. If this was a client with poor trunk control or maybe poor head control and they weren't um, able to stay sitting up, I would then maybe need to lift them in a more reclined angle. So that would be a longer loop on the shoulder and a shorter one on the leg. So then I'm just going to press my up button. I like to kind of stop at this stage just when my loops are taut and um, just to make sure that I'm happy uh, with everything. So up we go. Uh, you have your 360 degree turn here, should you need it. Now, so a lot of people will automatically come into the front of the chair, okay? Um, they might have this already flipped up out of the way to get in quite far. But you can see here then, I've got to watch Deirdre's feet. After I get her, I, I don't have any clear access to get her hips right into the back of the chair. And also, um, when I take away the hoist, I have to drop the foot plate and lift her legs to go onto it. So it's much, much better if you just come in at a slight angle. You may or may not need to open the legs of the hoist. So depending on your hoist, I can have my foot plate already down. So in I come. Okay, now you will see a lot of people and they'll be behind the high back chair doing this kind of yanking and pulling. Um, I do not recommend that and I don't think it's necessary. Okay, because I have the, uh, the chair at the side, I have complete clear access here. So with just a gentle push of the client's knees or depending on, on the type of client that I have, I can just literally put my hands on the patient's hips and down I come. So I've landed in a good position. Your brakes are left off the hoist because that will allow the, uh, the hoist just to draw back and not uh, get in the way of the patient. Okay, so taking off the sling. Again, mind your own position when you're doing this, okay? Bend your knees. Flick out the leg supports. If you want, if it's a patient that's at risk of sliding very quickly or readjusting, you can put that little bit of... of tilt on your chair and without disturbing the patient at all the sling will just ride up uh, because I put it on correctly the bottom trim has just gone to the end of the coccyx not actually under um, the patient's bottom the patient's feet are already on the foot plate so I don't need to go lifting the legs um, to put them on and uh, that's your patient uh, safely landed if you found this video useful like and share and if you'd like more information, please contact us at the email address below.